السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم الحمد لله We are coming to this occasion, the 27th of Rajab al Murajab, which most of the ulama uh, on such an occasion celebrate a great event that never happened before and never will happen after to anyone besides Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. The night uh, of Isra and Mi'raj or the night of heavenly ascension, the night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored his Habib by taking him to uh, Jerusalem and by then taking him from Jerusalem up through seven heavens past Sidratil Muntaha. Sidratil Muntaha is a tree representing a world that covers the seventh heavens, seven heavens. Uh, the farthest most lot tree as as some uh, translate um, and reaching even to a point where Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam told Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi sallam this is the limit this is the maximum I can accompany you after this I cannot because that would mean I would cease to exist if I either either إذا اقتربت احترقت وإذا أنت اقتربت اخترقت سيدنا جبريل تول سيدنا محمد If I pass this limit, if I pass this point, I will be incinerated, I will cease to exist But for you, حبيب الله, for you, you can pass through this, no problem, you are invited So, just this story of Mi'raj and this hadith about Sayyidina Jibreel saying this is the maximum of my limit shows you that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, he is honored more than anything else more than angels, more than human being, more than jinn your beloved Prophet وسلم, is the true abd that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Subhan alladhi asra bi abdihi his abd, his real abd, his only perfect abd perfect ubudiyya, perfect humbleness, perfect manners no one could have reached what Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, has reached in terms of nearness and being a beloved one to his uh, Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a clear uh, event that, that has so many benefits and so many wisdoms for the Ummah. And it has so many uh, meanings of who your Prophet وسلم, is in this creation and his his status in this creation and the kind of honor he has been granted in this creation and many people they they reflect upon what prophet sallallahu saw and they reflect upon the the ayat the signs that a human being has been granted not to travel through the seventh heavens seven heavens only to the had uh, dunya Everything we see in this creation of ours, when we look up at the sky, when they use telescopes, uh, when they send uh, things to Mars where they take pictures of the outer universe, that's only our galaxy. And that is in dunya. That is in Hayat al-Dunya, the uh, lowest world. And that universe, that, that galaxy, there's endless galaxies like it in this uh, Sama al-Dunya and all of those galaxies are in a, in a universe as science tells us now and then there is limitless universes like our universe full of galaxies like our universe also that's all in Hadd al-Dunya not even mentioning heavens and as we know now, they to go to the to Mars, a journey takes so so long with their rockets. And when they go 
uh, to on such a journey. They are so happy. They got some photos, and they take some samples from the soil, and they are so uh, happy with their findings that oh, Allah Akbar, we we don't say Allah Akbar, we say Allah Akbar for everything. Alhamdulillah. But they say oh, mashallah, uh, they're talking about it in the news. Uh, we found this thing we didn't know before about what's in Mars. We took a photo of another star that wasn't apparent to us. All of this is in the Sama dunya is in the lowest heaven. The lowest heaven. So your Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, went through all of that, which is light years of travel, then reached heaven, the first heaven, the first heaven, where Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam istaftah, meaning he reached to the first heaven and he asked for to be entering. And The angels asked him, who is with you? And he said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has, a ursila ilay, a waqad ursila ilay. Has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is this the occasion? Is this the exceptional happening that never happened before? That is happening now? Is this the time where Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes and makes such an amazing journey and visit and Jibreel alayhi salam says yes and he is welcomed and he meets the prophets and he meets the angels and they show him what's in heaven and in that heaven the travel between that heaven if you travel inside the heaven to the second heaven it is said in a hadith and sunnah that it's 500 years when you reach that second heaven Another 500 years to the third heaven of travel. And between one heaven and one heaven, 500 years. So 500 years to travel in that first heaven. And then 500 years distance between that heaven and that heaven. So just to give you an idea that a human being with his physical appearance... Not as some would say, there there are some ulama that say maybe it is by ru'ya or maybe it is both. Because there's reference that Sayyidina Muhammad was, was given the ru'ya, the vision of this event before it happened. And then it happened. But the actual occurrence happened with his physical being. And the dalil and on this is that the kuffar, the unbelievers of Bani uh, uh, of uh, in Quraysh that they objected and they belittled and they made fun and they denied and they thought he you know they would say things about him look what what your companion is saying to, as they said to say that Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu wa arda, is the, the evidence is that if if Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I was given a vision a ru'ya a dream that I traversed, I went to uh, uh, Jerusalem overnight and came back. Um, they were, why would they object? Anybody can have dreams. Anybody can have dreams. They went to, to the end of the world and came back overnight. And no one will object that, that, that somebody saw such a dream. But the fact that they objected is that because he was telling them that I actually was taken physically to Jerusalem overnight and was taken physically on Mi'raj. That is a clear, a clear evidence that this is, this happened physically. So your Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was granted to traverse all these heavens past the known universe. And came back, and his bed was still warm. So this is a very important point to understand. That 
when it comes to this occurrence don't say how don't say how could this be because Allah is saying to, to you in Holy Quran Asra bi'abdi. this is not pertaining to to your uh, uh, physical science or uh, the laws of the universe this is pertaining to your Lord's ability and qudra so suspend your disbelief in this and say سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We believe We affirm what Prophet ﷺ affirmed What his companions affirmed in this matter Yes, he traversed Yes, he traveled So this is a very Honored Nabi There is a reference by uh, Sayyidina Abdullah uh, Sirajuddin, one of the great sheikhs of Halab and one of the awliya where he said he, in, his in his description and his study of this event he said Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was taken Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala took him to Jerusalem where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala brought for him 124,000 Nabi Mursal Nabi and, and, and uh, Rasul 124,000 Nabi in their ruhaniyya, in their spirituality, were waiting for him in Baytul Maqdis. And, Al and Sayyidina Jibreel makes the iqama and asks Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be their Imam. Imam of Ahl al Ard, Imam of Anbiya, Imam of the best people on earth. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, when he went to the heavens, he also met the, the ruhaniyya of prophets in those heavens. Every Nabi in their, in their particular heaven they're in, he met them again. And on the way he saw Sayyidina, on the way before he went into the heavens, he saw Sayyidina Musa praying in his grave, عند الكثيب الأحمر. So Sayyidina Musa was, his ruhaniya, his spiritual body, was praying in his grave. Was waiting for Prophet Wasallam in Baytul Maqdis to pray behind him. Then he was on the sixth heaven waiting for him as well. So this is for an important point. Why? Because now we have a ta'ifa, we have a group of people in our midst that they say, khalas, no, the Prophet is, is dead and, uh, he, and his role is finished. And then there is, uh, there is no benefit whatsoever. Look, we are the beneficiaries of the ruhaniyya of Sayyidina Musa. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. If it wasn't for him, we would be obliged to pray 50 times a day. But his spiritual body, his spiritual being in the sixth heaven, asked, told Sayyidina Muhammad, advised Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, that, O oh, Prophet, وسلم, I've tried this with my ummah, they will never do it. Go back to your Lord and ask him to, to ease it up, make it less. So we. For those people who object that you can benefit by those who passed, we are all beneficiaries as Muslims. How many billions of people of Sayyidina Musa sallallahu alayhi wasallam's advice? Another benefit that we get before we get the salah in the seventh heaven when he met Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam says, "Aqri' ummataka minni salam." In in the hadith, he says, "Send salam to your ummah." to your uh, uh, ummah and tell them in al jannata tayyibata turbata azbatu al ma qi'an that tell tell your nation that this jannah has fertile soil has very fresh water and qi'an very fertile you know like when you have a flat land uh, in the valley, a very rich soil valley, like Qi'an. وَأَنَّ غِرَاسَهَا سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهُ وَلَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ And that the, the, the غِرَاس, what you plant in it, are those four words, الْبَاقِيَاتِ الصَّالِحَاتِ So, we say when, when we hear this, عَلَى سَيِّدْنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى نَبِيِّ اللَّهِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ السَّلَامِ You send salam because Sayyidina Ibrahim is sending you from, from his seventh heaven salam 
and he's giving you advice, a benefit to plant in your heaven. So we're also beneficiary of Sayyidina Ibrahim's advice after he passed from this dunya. So Anbiya are alive. Your Nabi is alive. Hayyun tariyun fi qabri. And he is more beneficial even now than he, he, he was in dunya. His benefit is limitless to his ummah. Even now you make one salawat on him in salam, he sends salam back to you. Salam from Prophet So this is a very important point. But then this is only the beginning. When Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi when they reach Sidratil Muntaha, which is this universe as described in Hadith, this tree, that you can travel, a man can travel a hundred years of Allah's years and still be under its shade. Magnificent tree. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tajalla idh yagsha sidra tama yagsha. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested his magnificence on that tree, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no one could describe its beauty at that time. And then, past that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adna as Holy Quran is mentioned, has mentioned. So, so many signs in Isra and Mi'raj to show you the qadr of your Nabi and to show you how honored we are and how, how blessed we are and how favored we are to have such a Nabi that we receive all these gifts. SubhanAllah. Sayyidina Abdullah Siraj al-Din, he said that there is reference Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad uh, that there is reference that the angels asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permission to witness your Nabi to actually look at your Nabi so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was invited to traverse all these magnificent Allah said we showed him from our great signs but look at your, the angels they all wanted to look at your Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said that Sidrat al Muntaha, the description of Sidrat al Muntaha is the fruits are like big, you know, like the big boil, uh, pots they used to boil uh, humongous things. Uh, boil, boil uh, I don't know if you've been to uh, Sayyidina Mu'in Din Shisti, is a ghulla. There's a big thing where they cook for people uh, rice every, every week. So, Qilal. That the fruits are like that and the, the leaves are like the ears of the elephants. And that every leaf, Sayyidina Abdullah Sarajuddin was saying, every leaf there was, a, there was angels on it waiting to look at the face of your Nabi. This is something to be happy and proud of. And to know that one of the fruits of, of this magnificent journey was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us salah, which is sila. Allah gave us our own mi'raj, our own way to be in His presence daily, our own way to be as near as possible to Him. As Prophet ﷺ said, the nearest a servant is uh, to Allah is during His sajda. So glorify your Lord, use this night if you can make qiyam, if you can thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His na'am, for His magnificent ata. They gave me a short period of time, maybe I will send, I think I'm over my time. May Allah forgive us. They can cut it if they like or not use it. But, uh, and our teachers uh, taught us to also fast the day in gratitude. Just as we fast Monday in gratitude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent us Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Also, for this khair, this is one way to thank Allah is through siyam, uh, through dhikr, through ta'abud, especially in this time. This is time of tadarra. This is time of showing humility to our Lord. To show Him that, Ya Rabbi, we are sinful ones, we are weak ones, but we are grateful and thankful for your aqa. Qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum min Allah al-tawfiq ila hadratin nabiyyi al-fatiha.